Well, another pleasant good morning, sports fans, and welcome to another edition of the BR Man and the Coach Talking Ball on the Ball Father Podcast, presented by Sports Kita. I'm Reggie Roberts, your longtime host, longtime NFL communications executive, and we're joined as always by our resident coach, my aunt, my top analyst, Mike Smith, winning his coach in Falcons. Good morning, coach. How are we doing, man? Good morning, coach. How are we doing, man? Doing great, Reg. We got the wild card weekend done. Hey, no, no, super wild card weekend according to the NFL. Super okay. wild card. Absolutely, and there were some super games. I'm telling you what, man. You know, you always we always talk about how the second season start it starts at the end of the when most of the playoffs start. And I tell you what, you know, the playoffs. I, I've always I felt this way at the very at, at the very beginning. Once the season and the playoffs are going to be exciting, I didn't know they were going to be this exciting. <laughs> <laughs> they were good. Hey. Oh my! Oh my gosh! Well, you know what? The, 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 my favorite round of the of the playoffs starts this weekend with the divisional playoffs. I used to think of, think of it as the men separating themselves from the boys. So they got a really good lineup going on this weekend, starting on Saturday, featuring Jacksonville at Kansas City, uh, New York Giants at Philadelphia at eight fifteen p.m. on Fox on Saturday, and then switching over to Sunday. Cincinnati will uh, uh, play Buffalo at three o'clock uh, on CBS, and then Dallas travels to San Francisco, where unfortunately I think their playoff Cinderella hopes end in the Bay Area. I think it ends out there in San Francisco. But we can we can get we can talk about that a little we'll bit. Have to chop that one up and talk we, about that a little bit. Okay, I, you know, you know, I, they won last night, and there's all this stuff on on social media about how great Dak played, and you know, we do know they're going to be looking for a kicker. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> Good the guy I've got any bad. Good to get I felt so bad for the guy last night, but I'm like, oh my God. I mean, what did he miss? Four in a row? Five in a row? What was it? I I lost count after a while. It wasn't pretty. We'll just leave it at that, man. It was not pretty. Well, well I tell you what, you know, let's let's talk about some of these games over the weekend because I tell you what, let's start let's start with New York, the New York Giants and the Minnesota Vikings, because I tell you what. Talk about pretty Daniel Jones. Daniel Daniel Jones went to work. That was pretty what he did over the weekend. Yeah, he did. He just hey, he just got some more money. There's no doubt about that. He's, yeah, he did. yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, we'll, yeah, he did. we'll talk about it. But you know, Daniel Jones, man, he's playing some good football right now, and he's got a chance to be a good quarterback. I don't I don't know that he's ranked as as uh, one of the elite quarterbacks in the league. Right. But he's at that, you know, he's at that next level and he's starting to play a lot better than he has early in his career. And uh, you got to give that to the, you know, to Dave Ball and his coaching staff for what they've been able to do to get him turned around and going in the right direction. I think, I think that's, Mike, I think you nailed it. You know, I think, I think you, you nailed it. He, 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 he hadn't been consistent before Coach Dave Ball and his crew got there. He had the injury bug. But I, but I think, you know, you kind of look at it, you know, he, he kind of checked every box this past this past year. You know, he, he got he got into a guy who I think probably believes in him, stayed healthy, eliminated the turnover problem, played well in key spots down the down the stretch. And now, you know, he's added that one elusive playoff win to his to his res, his resume. So I'm thinking, you know, he's he's given the front office guys something to think about as they, you know, they extended the, 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 the fifth year. They declined the fifth year of his op- option of his rookie contract, but I, I think you know they're in, they're going to be in meetings for the for for a good part of the offseason trying to decide what they're going to do with it because you know it's it's kind of hard to not pay a quarterback who's won a playoff game for you. I think it's difficult to do that. Yeah, it is, Reggie. You know, when they made that decision to not exercise that fifth year option, uh, they were gambling, and yeah, I think Daniel Jones is one. <laughs> because uh, if they would have made the move last year, they probably would have saved themselves fifty million dollars over over the long haul. It, it, and you know the Giants are going to have to compete now to re-sign him because he's a free agent at the end of the year. So anybody can come in and, and sign him. And Daniel Jones is a guy that has started to play in the second half of the season like a upper echelon quarterback I really had him in my concerned group if I, as the season started I would be concerned 
about is he the answer and that's what everybody's looking for in the national football league is they're looking for a quarterback that can take their team into the second season and win and win games and he did that he did that and he's got that check mark now on his resume and that just uh, increased his value not only for the giants but for other teams that are looking for quarterbacks in this league you know what i like most about him over the weekend coach I like this poise, okay? I like this poise, you know, because, you know, the first couple of series, he kind of, you know, a little bit struggled with it. But, you know, the, third, the second or third time they got the ball, he was finding guys on that shallow cross. He, he was finding guys that were running wide open. And, and he, you know, he, he, he you know, he set an uh, NFL playoff record of the weekend. He completed, you know, 24 passes, 301 yards, two TDs, and he rushed for 78 yards. He became the first quarterback in NFL playoff history. They have 300 passing yards, two passing TDs, and at least 70 yards rushing in a playoff game. I mean, he's a big dude. I mean, he's all a 6'4", 6'5", got a big arm. Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking you're, you're right. He's, he's probably made himself 50, 60 million dollars. And he's got other people in the league who are who are need a quarterback. So, okay, wait a minute. If the Giants decide they don't want this guy, we have somebody we probably should take a look at. Yeah, well, they don't even have to worry about the, what the... Giants are going to decide if they can pay more money, they can get him. He's going to be a free agent. And, uh, you know, so it's not like you've got exclusive rights to him. You've got to, you've got to now go out in the open market. So they'll be working on that quick, man. They'll try to get that locked up and got to have you a quarterback in this league, as you know. And I can't wait to have our quarterback discussion once the season's over because the quarterback carousel this year is going to be hot. It's going to be real hot. Everybody's looking, everybody's looking for that. Yep. Everybody's looking for the game changer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that segues nicely into to, to our, to our next well, game. Game hey, change. Go ahead. Hey, Rick, I got one other thing about that game. What in the hell <laughs> Kirk Cousins doing on fourth down? <laughs> and he checks it down. He's got to get the ball. Doesn't matter. He's got to get the ball across the first down line or the game's over. And he checks it down. Well, wow. we're, we're not playing for stats at that point in the game. Uh, you know, but, or they shouldn't be. Obviously, they, they should be. But if I tell you what, you know, not not only that, okay, not only was that one of the one of the big head scratches of the weekend, but you know, everybody talked. We we talked about this for for five six weeks. Right, we talked about this on on our podcast about. You know, playing one score games. Minnesota led the league this year with 11 one score games. And they wrote this huge article in the Minneapolis Press about, you know, how good they are and how composed they are. And how when it gets tough, they they, they they usually can pull out one score games. But what we said on our podcast last, well, last week, we said, you know what? Once you get to the playoffs, if you're playing like that, your, luck probably, your, your luck's probably going to run out when you're playing against a pretty good team. And you know what happened? Their luck ran out. Okay? Yeah, absolutely. Their absolutely. Luck so, you know, I'm... They, you know, you know, hats off to Coach, Coach O'Connell and their group for you know turning turning a really dumpster fire off when he got there to a 13 win team. But they got a lot of work they got to do on that defensive side of football this offseason. They got a lot of work. Yes, they do, and it's going to be interesting to see what uh, transpires here over the next couple of days or next week or so, and how they're going to approach that and what changes are going to be made there in the Minneapolis area. Yeah. Well, switching gears here a little bit, let's, you know, we were talking about guys who played out of their minds and who've been playing out of their minds. You know, what went down in Duval County, Jacksonville, Florida on, on Saturday night was, was unprecedented. I mean, are you serious? Can a guy play as bad as Trevor Lawrence played for the first 30 minutes of a football? Have you seen a guy play that bad in the first 30 minutes of a game ever? I've seen it happen and he doesn't get a chance to play in the second half. <laughs> but... But you can't do that with your with your quarterback that's the face of the tr fan tries. And he came back in the second half. But, Reg, four turnovers, right? Four turnovers. When you're plus four or over in the NFL, in terms of the ratios, you're going to win 99.97% of the time. I mean, we saw something that happens less than 1% of the time in the National Football League. And you got to give, you know, you got to give hats off to the to the Jaguars. I don't know what they said or what they did there in the locker rooms at halftime, 
but it was two completely different ball games. You know, it was an epic loss for the San Diego or, or the LA Chargers, right. and it was a big, big win for the Jacksonville. That's gonna, you know, that's gonna springboard the Jacksonville not only for next week and having confidence, but it's going to pay a lot of dividends for next season and next year. They're way ahead of schedule, the Jaguars are. No question. I mean, and I think, you know, Coach Peterson, we talked about this too on our podcast. We talked about how Coach Peterson, you know, veteran coach, veteran staff, you know, kind of came in, kind of helped those guys believe. Much like you did when you got to Atlanta, you know, he fixed the culture there, just like you did in Atlanta. He fixed the culture. And he's got those guys believing every week that they're going to play better. And then, you know, he's also got a quarterback who we've seen sort of come of age before our very eyes over the last six, seven, eight weeks of the season. That guy's playing great. Oh, he is. And, you know, <clears throat> this has kind of been the way this game went is really it wasn't as bad as this was worse than some of the things that happened in the season. But in the second half of the season, I look went back to look and see. This is part of their DNA for this team. Right, right. Since week nine, <clears throat> they've come back from a nine point, a 10 point, and, and two 17 point deficits against some pretty good football teams, Baltimore, Tennessee, and Dallas. Uh, so they've, they've done it a bunch this year in the second half of the season. So it doesn't really surprise me. It, it yeah. doesn't. But to come back, you know, to come back from 27 points, I mean, it's been crazy this year with the comebacks, you know, what happened with the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, and it, and then this week in the playoffs, it just it just amazes me. But you got to give you got to give Coach Peterson some props, not only about what he's done all season, but what he did in that ball game. He just added to the mystery of of him and his trick plays. You know, we had the you know we had the Philly special in the Super Bowl year. This year, we're going to be talking about the Duval special, where they lined up in the full house tee on a two point version where everybody thought they were going to run the push play with the quarterback from one yard out and they attacked the flanks with the running back at the uh from clemson etn travis etn yeah, yeah travis etn yeah and uh it, you know what a what a call you know on a two-point you know on a two-point conversion now you, you know, Bosa got him into that situation because he lost his cool. And I can imagine he was hot after losing a 27 point lead and he thought he was getting held. And, you know, they hold every play in the NFL. There's no yeah, doubt yeah. about it. Right. There's no reason to no reason to complain about it. But great win for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens next week. Third largest comeback in playoff history, setting up a trip to Kansas City where Jacksonville will face the top seed of Chiefs this upcoming weekend. Uh, I know the state has got a new a new name, a fancy corporate name. I still call it Arrowhead. Um, yeah. you, know, you know, that's a tough place to play. And, and they're 14 and three. They got a good team. They'll be ready to play rested and everything. Uh, but I tell you what, you know, I'm I'm so impressed with, with Trevor Lawrence with, you know, I watched a lot of his interviews over the weekend and saw him kind of talk about, he's very deferential, different, different, you know, different, you know deferring to teammates. His offensive line, his skill guy, his skill guys, the defensive guys played pretty well, made some stops when they needed to. Big, big team win and completely adding to the lore of, of Coach Peterson and his coach staff with regards to, you know, getting to the divisional round of the playoffs. Talk about it way ahead of schedule. Congratulations, them, because they are. They're way ahead of schedule. Yeah, no matter what happens this week in Kansas City, absolutely. it's a success in Duval County. Absolutely, absolutely. absolutely. Um, let's let's switch. Let's switch. You know, I, I'm thinking a little bit. I'm, I'm reading some stuff about Baltimore. You know, you know, it's a quarterback driven league. And you know, I'm reading all these stuff. Well, they didn't they didn't play well enough. This guy didn't play well. Huntley didn't play well enough. Well, let's let's just look at that for a second. Okay, you got if you line up Huntley next to Lamar Jackson, they're not even in the same stratosphere as far as athleticism and skill set. So that's really not fair to to to, to Huntley. It's not fair to him. You know, Baltimore's been playing without their without their guy, and when you when you don't have a quarterback in this league, Mike, we've seen what the results look like. Yeah, and it's hard to win when you don't have a quarterback, and they have missed Lamar Jackson. There's no <laughs> doubt about it. And 
But it's been it's been amazing to watch what they've been able to do there in Baltimore. They've been they were in the ball game. They were going to win. They had a chance to win this ball game. They did. They, you know, you talk about once you know one score games, one play games. But I've got to ask you, what in the heck was going on on the ball on the half yard line? Does the kid not know how to run a quarterback sneak, push sneak, and that's what they were trying to do? In that game, it was an absolute head scratcher. I don't know what's going to happen next with with uh, with with Baltimore and their quarterback situation because right now Lamar's not that you know he's not happy. No, and they know they can't win with the guys that they got, but they've got a they've got a great group of guys around a great quarterback. So with their team, if they can get this thing worked out with Jackson Lamar. Uh, Jackson, they're gonna they're gonna be good. But let's talk about that play though, Reg. You know, it changed. You know, it changed the whole trajectory of the game. They're going in to score. They, they right. call a quarterback, quarterback sneak from the six inch line, and the quarterback tries to leap over the line of scrimmage when he's got pushers behind him. And if you really watch that real closely on that play, when he jumped, the pushers actually turned his body because they weren't on the ground. And they contributed to the ball not getting across the goal line. They were basically making the tackle. They pushed wow. on, his, on his backside, and it flipped him around. And the, when it flipped him around, they punched the ball out. And then yeah. you know the rest is history. Sam picks it up and goes 98 yards. I just don't. Under, I don't understand that one play. Well, the, the, the part that sort of had me sort of scratching my head was you got that big run back, running back back there who weighs 220 pounds. Who had, who, had, who had set points during the second half was gashing Cincinnati's defense. I mean, he played pretty well. And then why why are you going? Why are you doing that? And, and then you know Logan Logan Wilson made a, made a really nice play. You know the guy heads up, fifty five knocks the ball out, and Sam have to Sam having to be there picks it up and rumbles you know ninety eight yards for a playoff record for a fumble return for a touchdown. Um, you know I tell you, it's one of those things where it was it was one of the most head scratching plays, and there were a lot of them over this weekend. There were a lot of them, um, but that, that one might have been the most. That one might have been the worst. That one might have been the worst. A absolutely, and I, and you got to feel for the kid. I'm sure that uh, you know he hadn't been in that situation, and in the, in the quarterback execution was not the right way to do it on that play, the way it was designed, and it actually. The, by him leaving his feet, he contributed to the fumble and the 99-yard return. And it's just, you know, you could see Coach Harbaugh on the sideline. I mean, he was just oh, he was done. Yeah, he, he didn't know what he didn't know what to think. And right. I'm sure nobody, you know, nobody really knew what the heck was going on and what the why was. So it was it, it was uh, it was play. Tough play, and then, you, but you got to give Baltimore credit. They came back and almost, you know, within inches of, of a catch there at the end, where the result could be different. So, right, right. Uh, you know, well, just Baltimore's talk. a good football team from top to bottom. They really are. They got a good team, and, but you know, let's talk about the other guy. I mean, you know, you know, the other guy for some reason doesn't get as much attention. You're talking about Burrow. I mean, 30, you know, team record thirty-five touchdown passes this year. I mean, he can spin it as any as any as well as anybody in the league. He's got big arms. He's throwing it to Jamar Chase. He's got the other guy on the other side. He's throwing it to, you know, Joe Mixon's kind of a really good running back. I mean, they they got they got some stuff. Um, I'm just there's there's something about them, and I'm thinking it might be on the defensive side that I'm just not convinced that they're going to be good enough to compete with the Kansas Cities and the Buffaloes of, of the world. But you know what? Hey, you know that's why they play the games. That's why we play. That's why they play the game. I, I, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm not sure. I like like them this weekend in Buffalo. We'll get to, we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a in a in a minute. We'll get to that in a minute. But I, but they but they they played well enough with the head scratch and play that Huntley made, and they you know Sam Sam makes it makes the long return and they win and they and they advance and, and Baltimore goes home. So and we mentioned Baltimore's fans got some questions because Lamar represents himself or his mother represents him or I forget exactly what it, how it works. But they got to figure it out. They got to. They got to either. You know. They got to pay Lamar, and the fans are screaming that they got to pay Lamar. You know, they'll burn Baltimore down if they don't pay the guy. They will. Well, they they may do that, but Baltimore has 
has not paid guys before and they've they've moved on they'll they'll make it you know they'll make a good evaluation of what's going on in terms of what he's wanting but it's going to be interesting to see but they need lamar jackson leading the baltimore ravens into the future because he is one of the top quarterbacks he's an elite quarterback in the national football league he is that you know i'm with the pr man the coach talking ball in the ball for the podcast presented by sports kita coach let's just finish up the, the games here and we'll talk about a few more things there um you know the bills to me had a little bit more of a tough time tougher time so getting past the the dolphins in what in a game that that you know again there were some scratching moments in that game and the one thing that i want to ask you as a coach you know they, they've got you know we all like we, you know how much i love josh allen and, and his confidence in his arm i mean he made a throw there towards the third quarter off his back foot where he just kind of slung it threw it to gabe 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 davis i think's a receiver and they went up uh, with two minutes and seven seconds left in the, in the third quarter. It was an incredible throw. He had a lot of people in his face, but it's a incredible throw. How do you get the guy to protect the football, but not take away any of his aggressiveness as a, as a coach? How do you have what? How do you have that conversation with your quarterback, Reggie? Those are tough conversations to have because what what makes him good is what makes it head scratching. Right. <laughs> and, Exactly. You know, sometimes you got to take the good with the bad, and those plays that he makes maybe outweigh the, you know, the head scratchers. And you know, you you've got to talk to him about a couple things. One is ball security, but probably more important is him being healthy. You need him. You know, you need him to be healthy. Uh, and the way he throws his body around when he takes off and run, it's like he's a running back and. A running back doesn't last very long in the National Football League, and that's why these quarterbacks that are running, they have to be escape artists at a certain point in time on the play. When they know they're going to take a hit, the good ones get down or find a way to lessen the blow. Well, you know what? He hasn't learned that yet because he he takes – I mean, he's, I get it. He's 6'5", 240, big arm, lots of confidence, mouths off. I mean, he, he – He's a tough guy, and I like that. I like that he's a tough guy. But I tell you what, I mean, you know, the goal is to get there, is to get, is to advance, advance, and to be healthy. Okay, football's a game of attrition. You've got to be healthy. And he worries me. He worries me with how he plays. Like there were a couple of times in that game on on on, on Sunday where he just kind of just you know they're looking for a first down. He was dragging people with him and and putting his head down. I'm like, oh my gosh, I mean, come on, dude. I mean, I'm. I'm, as, as, I'm not even a coach, but I was thinking, you thinking, I know Mike's got to be crunching. No, he's got to be crunching. Yeah. Well, you know, he reminds me, people that watched Ben Roethlisberger when he was young, he would yeah. take off the rod. And it was hard to tackle that big guy. And it's and it's the same It's the same thing. But he's, you know, he's going to learn. And at some point in time in his career, he's going to stop doing it. But right now, it's part of his DNA as, a, as an NFL quarterback. And it's... You know, a couple of injuries might change that, or cu- injuries with within the quarterback groups on other teams. Right. They're gonna, he'll learn, but as a coach, you do not want to neuter him. You want to make sure that they play their game because that's what he has done to be a successful quarterback all through college, and it's carrying over here into the NFL. Well, I tell you what, he he's one of my favorite players. I love what I love his I love his, his moxie. I love his toughness. I don't think there's anybody in football playing right now that's got as much confidence in their right arm as he does. He'll throw it anywhere. He'll throw it. He'll throw it between the safeties. He can kind of he can let the guy run up, run up under it. I mean, he is he's playing as he's playing as good. We'll, we'll talk about him in the picks. But I, you know what? I like him. They've rallied it around him. The, the defense and the offensive guys, and then the thing they got going with Demar Hamlin. You know, they, they they might be my upset special pick this week. We'll, we'll talk about that as we as we keep going. You know, let's 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 go out to the West Coast and talk about the um, the San Francisco 49ers and the Seattle um, Seahawks. Uh, you know, game was kind of close for a while. It was back and forth. Was, you know, Geno was keeping them in there, and then you know, the Niners kind of did what they did. They kind of blew it open late there in the third quarter. Uh, you know, the quarterback. You know, what, what can you say about him? You know, you got to give Coach Shanahan and his staff a lot of credit for, for taking a guy, taking his skill set, being able to, to exploit that. And to win games, um, you know, 49ers scored 25 consecutive second-half points, take down Seattle, setting up a divisional playoff matchup against against the Cowboys. 
What's your impressions of, of how San Francisco is playing, Mike? And uh, what, what do you see them advancing? Do you see, could you see them possibly advancing to the Super Bowl with, with what they got going right now? Well, they're playing really good football, and Brock Purdy continues to just win games. That's what he does. He wins games. And you have to give Coach uh, Shanahan and his coaching staff uh, kudos for what they've done because they're playing to the strengths of their team. They're not asking uh, Brock to win the game. They're asking Brock to distribute the ball. And he's doing that to his playmakers, to, to Samuel, you know, Debo Samuel and Christian McCaffrey. And he's playing the way the game's supposed to be played for the San Francisco 49ers that week. And that's the reason they've got the long winning streak that they have going right now. Yeah. 49ers are also the best defense in the NFL. There's no doubt about it right now. Not even close. Yes. Not even close. And the defensive coordinator's done a miraculous job, D'Amico Ryans, and he's in the mix for some of the head coaching openings uh, throughout the league. But you got to, you know, you just got to say to everybody that watches San Francisco that. Coach Shanahan is going to put those guys in the best situation possible. He's done it over and over all season long. And when you're doing it with a third string quarterback, that says a lot about that coaching staff. Right. Like you, you've had coaches um, on your staff who, 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 who are, you know, get an opportunity to go talk to another team, um, you know, during the bye week or whenever, whenever it was. I saw something on 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 D'Amico Ryan's San Francisco's defensive coordinator, who obviously was a great player for the Texans as a linebacker when he played, but he's turned into a pretty good defensive coordinator, pretty pretty good coach, defensive coach. I think no, I saw a real him, good, a real yeah, good coach. Real good coach. Yeah. Turned into a real good coach. I think I saw somewhere where he's got either three or four interviews this week, and getting ready for a playoff game, getting ready for. A, how, do you, how does that happen, Mike? I mean, with the preparation that goes in to get a team ready for not just a game, but a playoff game, a divisional playoff game, how does the guy have the mental wherewithal and the physical the physical, physical wherewithal to get a team ready to play and also prepare himself to go learn, you know, you know, basically two teams or four teams or however many, I think it's four interviews, eight teams, philosophies, players. How do you go do that and present, be able to present yourself in a manner where they may give you the give you the job? How do you do that? It's very difficult, Reggie. I remember I was interviewed uh, by the Falcons on a Friday before we were playing our playoff game, and I think you have to just let the teams know that hey, your focus has been on game preparation, and I want it to be a introduction an introduction an introduction more, more than an interview and he's gonna you know he's gonna get a second interview right this is the, the first round and i think the teams know the teams that are still playing and most of the guys that are getting interviewed uh right now are teams that are playoff teams successful teams have coaches that go on and have opportunities to be head coaches you can't take it away from your job. You got to do your job that you have right now. Don't worry about the other one until, until the appropriate time. And I'm sure most of the guys that are doing it right now are focused solely on getting a victory this upcoming week. But he's going to have to do some short interviews. They won't be in-depth interviews. There's no way they can be in-depth interviews and an interview with eight or nine people. It's more of an introductory uh, interview and there's so many guys that are getting interviewed right now if you look at the list uh, most lists are 12 to 15 coaches long and so they're they're throwing a wide net the nfl owners are you can see that it's a it's a whole lot different and there's a lot of guys that are on multiple multiple uh, lists, lists. Yes. yeah so, these first round interviews are not nearly as in depth if they get to a second uh, interview. Right. right. The second, the second one involves staffing, personnel. Who are you going to bring with you? That kind of stuff. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. and your philosophy, your philosophy is yeah. going to be more in depth and some of the things that you would like to see in place as the head coach and your how you're going to work with the general manager and your 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 thoughts on 
on draft, you know, drafting, building a team, just some of the things that you can that you can knock out in a short period of time. You're on with the PR man, the coach, talking ball on the Ball for Other podcast presented by Sports Keto. Coach, we're going to finish up this last game, you know, the one that took place last night in Tampa, right down the road from from, from where I live here in, in, in sunny Florida. Um, you know, I, I'm going to just be honest with you. Okay, I, I was 4-0 up until that game with my picks. And I, I'm thinking, okay, Tampa's at home. You know, Cowboys have won eight, have lost, dropped eight consecutive wild card playoff games. They're on the road. They're traveling. You know, Dak hadn't played particularly well. He's throwing the ball, throwing the ball to the other team. Remember, it all set up for the Cowboys to lose until they started playing. You know, Dak probably has what I would consider a, I don't know, I thought it was kind of a kind of a really good game. He played well. He, he was in command of the offense. And, you know, they, they went in a walk, in a walk 31-14, which creates a whole series of questions and what's going to happen with Tom Brady and what's going to happen with Coach Bowles and Leftwich. Give me your assessment on what you think happened last night, and we can kind of get into some of these other questions that are spun off of this of the result of this game last night. Hey, Reg, that was a beatdown. There was no doubt in my mind after the first quarter who was going to win that football game. There wasn't going to be a big comeback. It was a difficult day for Tampa Bay. It was uncharacteristic of Tom Brady and his offense. They really struggled. And that opens up now the Brady questions for what's going to happen in the future. It opens yeah. up questions about the, the, the head coach, the offensive coordinator, as so many people have been talking about it all throughout the year. Even though they're in the playoffs in Tampa, this has been a failure of the season. It's not what they anticipated. It's not what they expected. And there's going to have to be some real heart-to-heart -heart discussions within the organization about what they want to do moving forward. Well, I, you know, that's interesting you said, Mike, because I, there's, you know, like we talked about from the very beginning, you know, this has been just a weird year that ends with an 8-10 record for the, for the San Bay Buccaneers. I mean, no one saw that coming with the quarterback they had, with the personnel that they've got. And they had some injuries. I mean, they just like everybody else, they've had some injuries. But, you know, now there's all this speculation about what, you know, what happens to the quarterback. I mean, you know, does he want to play? You know, does he go play someplace else? You know what happens with coach with coach Bowles and coach coach and coach coach Leftwich? Are they there? Um, you know, and I think this is my own opinion, Mike. I don't think anybody knows the answers to those questions less than 24 hours after the game just ended. I mean, I think this is the time. This is this is a time for reflection, and there'll be a lot of evaluation. You know, the general manager there, Ryan Lick, will get together with his staff, and they'll get they'll sit with the owners, and they'll talk about what they want. And you know, I'm sure. We'll know, you know, you know, relatively quickly on on some of these things. Um, but I, 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 for anybody to say that they know what's going to happen in Tampa Bay or any other of the 31 NFL teams, I don't think that's I don't think that's accurate or fair. I think teams really take their times in most cases to sort of decide, you know, the direction because these are big decisions and they're multi multi year expensive decisions. And I think it's probably smart to just kind of take your time to review and evaluate where you want to go. You're absolutely correct, but that's not always the way it's going to happen. The, uh, this is a very competitive uh, atmosphere that you're in when you start to talk about coaches. And you can see, as you mentioned, like with D'Amico Ryans, he's got four or five interviews. And if he's on the top of the list of two, two of them or three of them, they're going to get anxious. They're going to want to get their guy. And uh, it gets sped up very, very quickly. And... I, they need to step back and take a deep breath and figure out not just in Tampa, but in some of these other organizations that are a week ahead of them that have had an opportunity to do it is to go through the process, but they need to rehash really what happened and why. Yeah. And right. then move on to how are we going to fix this? And everybody's going to have a different, everybody is going to have a different opinion for the most part. And every organization's set up differently on who's making the decisions. And that's the unique thing about the NFL. And that's why this off season of coaching changes is just as 
it's it's just a part of it. It's just as big as the combine. It's just as big as the preseason. It's just as big as the draft. But it's handled differently, and it's it's really interesting to watch the information, the misinformation, and all the things that are going on uh, in these coaching searches. And it's going to be interest. It's going to be interesting. I know I'm using that word a lot, but it's going to be very interesting to see how it shakes out in Tampa Bay. And I think that there's 180 degrees of separation on what could potentially happen, but there is going to be change. And it doesn't matter what team you're on, whether it's a coaching change from one season to the next season, there's always change. That's the only guarantee that you have in the National Football League is there's going to be change from one season to the next. And, and who knows what's going to happen. And there's so many moving parts and so many people involved in the decision making because these are big, big decisions. And each organization approaches it differently. Tampa's going to approach it a whole lot differently than uh, San Diego. And, and San Diego's got some tough decisions to make. And to, me, to me, Red, there's always, and we because I think we need to first address the coaching situation, because you mentioned that, is there's always going to be a surprise change in the administration or in the head coaching position. We've had the, you know, we've had five changes that we know of right now, but there's something coming down the pipe, usually one or two surprises. And we'll find out in the next, you know, week or so, probably less than a week. Yeah. They'll have meetings here and, and, and they'll get together. The people that are the decision makers at these different clubs, and we're talking about Tampa Bay, they'll get together, do an evaluation with, with Jason Lick, the general manager and ownership there in Tampa, and they'll make a decision. Uh, you know, the Tom Brady decision is, he's a free agent. That's right. the way I understand. So Tom Brady is a free agent. He doesn't have to be, go back and play in Tampa. He's not under contract. He can go anywhere in the league. And, uh, you know, there's some wild ass ideas out there about what might happen with him. You know, he can go to TV, right? He's got that in his back pocket. Uh, yep. He, you know, people, some people are saying he's going to go to Oakland because he wants to get back close to where he grew up. You know, there's other people that are are saying that he may want to hook up with a specific coach. Uh, and there's a coach that's out of the, you know, out of the cir circuit right now that's being mentioned at five places. It wouldn't surprise me one bit if those two got together because they tried to get together to go to Miami last year and it all got blown up and the owner ended up having to be disciplined by the NFL. So yeah. the NFL's off season is just as wild and crazy as the in season and the playoffs. It really, it, it really is, Mike. I mean, you're right. I mean, there's there's a there's a lot of conversations to take, to take place. You know, I'm, I'm on the phone constantly with, you know, media guys who are looking for information or looking for phone numbers, of, you know, since I was in the league so long looking for reporters and guys and guys who need them for information. And I was on the phone with a guy yesterday who says, you know, he's, he, we, were, we were talking about, you know, what's going on with, in Tampa with, with Coach Bowles and Coach Leffridge. And I like both of those guys. They were asking me what I thought. I said, well, I said, I, I think it's, I said, I think it's hard to fire a team, no matter how bad fire a guy, when he, if he's won the division and gone in the playoffs. I said, I think it's really, really hard. I think it sends a really, really bad message to the team and, you know, to, 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 to the coaching staff. It just sends a, it sends a really bad message. And his, his comment to me was, he goes, hey, so what they won the division? Big deal. He goes, they they underachieved. Yeah, you know, I, okay, okay, I, I, you know, okay. But I think, again, you know, and just like you said, I think there's got to be an evaluation process. And I think there can't be, you can't make decisions like that, snap decisions on emotion. It's raw right now. You just lost, you lost on national TV, you were at home, you're playing. Like I said, you were, you know, quarterback. Your quarterback ended the game, you know, you know, having not lost a, a divisional. Um, I mean, he beat the Cowboys. Sorry, he beat the Cowboys seven times. Five as a member of the Patriots, and twice as a member of the Bucks. So he was seven and zero against the Cowboys. It didn't happen last night, you know. And, and he was he was bad last night. He wasn't very good. The offense wasn't very sharp. 
Defensively, they didn't play well. I mean, they just it was just an all-around tough performance. But you know, again, I think you're right. There will be some lot. There, there will be a lot of conversations, um, and 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 there will be change. I do agree with that. There will be change across the league. There'll be change. Yes, yes. That's not just specific to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's every team. We've already seen it, and there's there's things that have happened or are going to happen that we're not aware of in terms of how the roster is going to be put together, how the coaching staffs are going to be put together. It just doesn't stay the same, as we mentioned earlier. In this head coach hiring cycle, uh, takes on a life of its own for the next four to you know four or five weeks because there's guys that are going to go to the Super Bowl and be coaching on a Super Bowl team that are going to get head coaching jobs. And we're not going to know where, you know, where and who until a later date. So right. it's it's just it's just such an interesting dynamic. And, you know, that just leads me into, let's just talk about this is now, it's playoff season. It's the second season for eight teams or uh, now, but it's the head coach hiring season for the rest of the league. It really is. And it affects every team in the league because you hire coaches for the most part, 99% of the time, the coach is hired from within the league. It doesn't right. come from outside the league, so it affects everybody. And as I mentioned, we've got five right now. The Panthers, the Colts, and the Broncos, they made their changes during the season. They should be ahead of everybody else yep. in terms of, of, of what they need to do to hire a new head football coach. And then, as you know, we've had the changes here after the season with the Texans and the Cardinals. And yep. I mentioned, Rich, right? There's going to be a surprise. I don't know who is it, it going to be. Where is it going to be? Is it going to be in San Diego? That would, you know, that would be one. And I'll throw this one out there. Could it happen in New Orleans? Could, right? Could it happen in New Orleans? Could Sean, hey, could Sean Payton go back to New Orleans and Tom Brady, who's a free agent, go to New Orleans? Is it possible? Maybe. Who knows? They talked knows? about it last year. Yeah. Right? It's not, not like the, it Dolphins, been... the Dolphins were trying to do it. They were trying to put it together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was. Well, you know, it's far fetched, but the, I know one thing: Sean Payton is going to be in the conversation for four of the five teams that are looking for head coaches right now. Right. It's, in, it's being reported that way, and you know, Sean can talk about it himself because he's <laughs> in the media, <laughs> right? So he can report. He's in the media. News. He, he can break talk to the San Diego Chargers. He, he he can break it on TV on Fox. He's in the he's in the media. It's it's yeah. it's, a, it's an amazing advantage that he has right now. It really is. It's an amazing. It, it advantage. really is. No, it really is. And uh, the situation with with uh, with Sean is interesting because he's gonna they're gonna have to give the Saints some type of compensation. Hell, right. they're talking about that. Mickey Loomis is talking about it. Everybody, you know, everybody's kind of talking about it's kind of a different uh situation because it's never really gone down this way most of the time it's real secretive right. about who's you know who you're talking to who's the leading candidate and you know the saints are coming out and saying well if you want to talk to sean payton this is this, this is the start yeah. yeah 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 right hey, here's here's the cost here's what it's gonna here's what it's gonna cost and guess what it's probably just a starting point because if two teams get involved with it, the price of poker is going to go up. The price of getting Sean Payton to be your head coach is going to go up. So uh, we just got to wait and see what's going to happen. But it's a very interesting dynamic with, with Coach Payton because he's on four lists right now. And he's probably on a couple other lists that we don't even know teams that have a list. You know what ask, I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. But we're, before we get to our picks, I just want to talk, just run down a couple of things uh, from the bosses list. Um, you know, right now, with 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 the number of teams, there's eight teams left. 
eight teams left. So you got, you know, just to go over the schedule this weekend, you got Kansas City will be uh, will be hosting uh, Jacksonville. And then the uh, the New York Giants have to go to Philadelphia to the Lincoln Financial Field to play the Eagles. And then you've got uh, Dallas traveling to San Francisco, happening to uh, to uh, play the 49ers. And I got a, I got a note on that one too. I want to share with you. And then I'm not sure. I, I are, it, it, Buffalo's going. To, Buffalo should go to Cincinnati. Don't they have to go to Cincinnati? Or is it the other way around? The other way around. Okay. So okay. So, so Buffalo's the home. Buffalo's the home team. Okay. Um, I saw something that Tony Dungy said over the weekend. Uh, just I mean, actually this morning. Where he says, as well as nice of as nice of a feel good story as the Cowboys are uh, last night, he says it's going to be really really hard for him to go out to San Francisco and win. And he cited the trap. He said like he said the 49ers have like a 52 hour advantage. You know they got to they you know they got to they got a 52 hour advantage. They got to travel. It was something I thought about. I'm thinking I'm thinking that's that might I've never seen it. I've never seen anybody say it that way. But he said the traveling and the practice time and. The rest time and, and it's, you know, it's favor San Francisco since they since they, finish, they, they finish their game on Saturday, so it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. Yeah, no, that is a a valid point. Yeah, a very valid point. Yeah, in terms of going, you know, going out and playing because of the way they want to have play up to have a Monday night game and then to turn around and play a, a team that had a Saturday game. Right. I think two, day, be, two days, two days advantage. I, I I'd be complaining about that. Oh, I know you would. When I when I first saw that, I said I, I got to ask Mike that on the podcast. I, as soon as I saw that, I said there's no way he wouldn't get on the phone and call somebody to league offs about that. <clears throat> and he said he said it's it, he said it's a 52 hour advantage for San Francisco. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, didn't somebody did, did somebody not think about that before they made that schedule? Jeez. Yes, it, it and that's to spread out the. The weekend into the into Monday and in the NFL Monday is part of the weekend really yeah. it's Thursday through Monday but in playoff in the playoffs they still want to have that Monday night game yeah yes yeah. well you know what let's let's get to our let's let's finish up we get to our picks here um you know yeah I, you know the, I tell you what I guess this this weekend was always sort of my favorite week you know specifically when I worked at the league office and, and then when I got to the got to um got to the to the to the Falcons and the Bucks you know, because what happens is, you know, you, you especially if you you were a team that got the bye, you know, you kind of went through a little light week of practice. You didn't really, you did some stuff, but you didn't do, you didn't do a whole lot. But this was the week that kind of, it, it, you know, the media started showing up, the national media started showing up. You know, you know, instead of having, you know, forty five people in your locker room, you had a hundred people in your locker room, and it was it was a really exciting time. Um, but let's just talk. Let's just go over the matchups. I mean, uh, let's go over the matchups. And by the way, did you? Did, what, what, what was your record last week in the divisional game? Were you four and zero, or were you four? And, were you three and one? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay. I forgot. Okay. You were four and zero because you picked the Cowboys. I did pick the Bucks. Okay. So I'm three and one. Okay. All right. So let's 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 look at the first one. You know, Jacksonville as good of a feel good story is. It's good as a feel good story there. I think their magic, their, their magic carpet ride comes to an end this weekend in uh, in at Arrowhead. I don't think they beat the Chiefs. The Chiefs are rested. Andy Reid's brilliant. They got all those guys rested. The quarterback's playing out of his mind. Kelsey's playing good. Defensively, they're they're not in the same league as, as San Francisco and Philadelphia, but they're still pretty good. And they're at home. I go Chiefs big. I agree, Reggie. Kansas City has way too much firepower on offense. My now MVP favorite, Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, Juju Smith-Schuster, Marquise Valdez-Scantling, they're way too much. Andy's yeah. had, and Andy has had a week to come up with some crazy formation <laughs> down in the red zone. There'll be a play or two, just like Doug Peterson, who's a disciple of Andy, Francis, showed, yep. him, showed in their game, they're going to have some type of special going for the game this week. And I've got to say, Kansas City's way too much power for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree. I agree, agree on that. All right. New York Giants, feel good story uh, over Philadelphia. Uh, no, traveling to Philly to play, play, to play the Eagles. 
No, you know, here's another one. Eagles, you know, rested whole week. Look to look at it. Giants got. I mean, it's not a it's not a huge travel. They're division. It's a division game. Basically, they're playing each other for the third time this season. Um, you know, as much as as much as I like Coach Dayball and what they've done, you know, I, I think I think it's I think you're running into a Hornets next year. You're, you're playing a, a Philly team that's got a, can, can play defense. They've had a week. They're rested. Got a lot of weapons on offense. Quarterback played as good as anybody was in, was in the MVP conversation early. You know, until he got hurt. I think uh, Philadelphia is over. To meet beats the Giants and, and and marches on to the championship game. I agree with that, Reg. It's, the Giants have done a nice job with the first-year coaching staff. I do believe that the Eagles' offense is going to be problematic. Wink Markendale and his defense, even though he's played that offense and schemed against that offense in Baltimore for years when he was the defensive coordinator. It's very similar, but it's just it's going to be too hard. I really believe Jalen Hurts is going to be too hard to defend. If you load the box, he's going to beat you throwing the ball. If you're light in the box and you try to cheat somebody, he's going to throw he's going to throw the ball either in the quick game or he's going to block it up and throw the ball down the field. I think Philadelphia hands handles the Giants easily. Yeah, I think you're right. So we're both we're both in agreement. Now here's where I think we're going to do. Here's my uh, upset special. Okay. You know, the, you know, Dak, Dak right now, you know, was sort of smelling the roses last night. Everybody's talking about all the nice things they're saying about Dak. You know, again, you know, I, I'm going I'm to agree with, I'm going I'm to agree with Coach Dungeon on this one. I think that's going to be really, really hard to, to, to think that the Cowboys can travel, you know, travel and go across the country and, and go to San Francisco and have success. I, I, I do believe that the travel is going to catch up to them. And plus, I think San Francisco's got one of the best defenses in football. You know, I don't think they get blown up, but I don't think they win. I think I think San Francisco wins and they go to the championship game. Yeah, I got to disagree with you, Reg. I I think that on paper they're two really very good teams, especially on defense. Yep. Both of them are two good teams. I think the more experienced quarterback is going to win. Purdy really? is a really seventh round third string quarterback <laughs> that's that to me is gonna it's gonna finally show up here w- when the stage is very very big and they're gonna try to keep it you know keep it simple for them like they've done all year and they've done a great job but I think Dan Quinn and the Dallas Cowboys defense is gonna really get after the young quarterback and I've got to go I've got to go with the Dallas Cowboys so okay Okay, well, I like your reasoning. I like your reason, Coach Quinn. Coach Quinn knows what he's doing. Okay, you're right. Okay, they're talking about him. He said he's going to be a guy that's going to get some attention as far as a head coaching uh, opportunity in this cycle. They were talking about him last night on the broadcast. That makes that does make some sense because you're right. He is seven round pick from from what Iowa State, wherever he played. Uh, yep. He's playing with so much confidence, and I'm just thinking, you know, you don't think that you don't think the scheme is helping him, and you know, he's, he's you know he's distributing the ball to Debo and McCaffrey and those guys. You know, it's, it, it, look, it's, it looks like it, it, exactly what he did over the weekend. But I do know that they are going up in Clay. They're going up. They're going up to it. Seattle, Lynn, Dallas. I get that. I get Honestly, that. Yes, Ab- yeah, absolutely. I, I absolutely. get that. But I, I do have to say that Coach Dungey had a had a very valid point last night in terms of the fifty two hours advantage. But the Cowboys, if if they don't turn the ball over, if Dak is clean, they're going to get after. They're going to get after him on defense. They are yeah. really. I think the Dallas Cowboys are going to really get after him. They've right. got some firepower on the defensive side of the football. They do. And in the last game, you know, Cincinnati goes to Buffalo to play uh, to, to play the Bills. Uh, you know, it was kind of a, a rematch of the game that took place a couple of weeks ago on Monday night, where where Demar Hamlin gets hurt. Um, you know, there'll be lots of emotion in that game. The Bills will be trying to get to the championship game. Um, you know, I, I I gotta like I like Bills Mafia at home. You know, as much as I like Burrow, his big arm, played at L- LSU, throwing to Jamar Chase, is also from Louisiana. I gotta go with the Bills at home. If Josh Allen doesn't turn the ball over, Buffalo <laughs> wins. <laughs> 
Although I just told you, hey, go ahead and run earlier in the podcast. I said, go ahead and run, jump, fly through the air, do all with it, all your crazy stuff. But if he doesn't turn the ball over, Buffalo wins. Well, I think it's going to be the best game of the weekend. I think it's probably going to end up being the, the best game because you've got two really good quarterbacks. And yeah. Cincinnati is playing outstanding football right now. I like Joe Burrows, but I just feel like the Bills at home are going <clears> to <throat> are going to win that football game. Yeah, uh, you know they they play they're they're, a little, they're a different team there. They're a different team at home, and I, I like I like them I like them I like them at all. Man, I think I tell you what, let me see what else we got. But I think that's all. I think that's all we got. Here. Well, let, hey, let's let's dip let's dip into the to the draft just for them because yeah. we're gonna be, we're gonna be talking about that pretty soon. Yeah, we will be. Yep. So, what do you, you know, we talk about? We think we well, got five guys, the top five guys that will be selected in this year's draft um, for, out of the college ranks. Well, it's time to start talking about the draft. And for the draft, Nick, it's, it's never too early to be talking about the draft. But let's just talk about the draft order. So, you got the Bears picking one, the Texans picking two, Arizona picking three, Indianapolis picking four, and Seattle. Picking five via the Denver. The Denver, yeah, the Denver trade. The Denver trade, and you know, you look at the you look at the Bears. They don't need a quarterback. They've got Fields, right? Yep. They need, they need D line help, but they also know that the teams behind them need quarterback help. Do they stay? Do they go? Those are all going to be the questions that everybody's going to be talking about. If they don't trade back. They need D-line help. And the top D-line player in the league right now, or in the in, in college football, and the highest rated guy is Jalen Carter from UGA. Big, big man Bro. that is in your face all night long. <laughs> whether it's playing in the SEC, whether it's playing in the NFL, doesn't matter. He's going to step right in, be a day one starter, and be a do- be a dominant player. So it just depends on do the Bears trade back or do they stay and go for need? And definitely, their need is in the defensive line. In my in my opinion, the Texans they may need a quarterback. Yeah, you know, is Mac Jones the answer? I eh, don't know. But they also don't have a very strong roster from top to bottom. And so I don't know where they go. Arizona, I think, the third pick, they got to go defense to front. That's probably their biggest need. Indianapolis has got to go quarterback and offensive line. Yep. And, and Seattle also needs to go quarterback. So there, it's, it's going to be some guys looking to take quarterbacks. And there's probably two that stand out, Reg. Bryce Young from Alabama and CJ Stroud from Ohio State. Maybe and maybe the kid from Kentucky. I've heard I've heard some good things about Will, Will Levis. Levis is how you pronounce that. Le- They're Levis in, at Kentucky. Those are probably the top three quarterbacks in this year's draft. Jalen Carter by far the best interior lineman. And then there's teams that are looking for edge rushers that might jump up into that top five. There's guys like Miles Murphy from Clemson and Tyree Wilson from Texas Tech, the big kid, 6'6", 275 pound edge player. And those are just some guys that people have been talking about. It's gonna change. We don't know the medicals on these players. Won't know until they get to the combine, but it's never too early to start talking about draft because that's the most talked about part of the season in my opinion because everybody can everybody from the colleges this is the great thing about the draft and having the draft on TV all of the people that go to the that are Georgia fans now they get to become NFL fans and they want to talk about how many guys are going to go from Georgia is it going to be 6 you know, is it going to be six in the first two rounds? And it brings the college fans and the NFL fans together. And I think it's it's amazing to see that the 
people that follow the draft just aren't NFL fans. It's the college fans that are wanting to see where their guys are going to go. I get it. What about that? What about what about the guy Will Anderson from Georgia? The or no, the Will the Will Anderson from Alabama. Alabama. He's yeah. he's an edge. He's an edge player. Yeah. Yes. He, he, like he's an edge player, and he's a good player. Yeah. There's, you know, there's always Reg. Some years we always used to talk about it. Some years we used to call him sure enough. You know, <laughs> he's sure enough going to be a good player. And, <laughs> And some some years there were, you know, we'd always say, are there eight sure enoughs? Are there 10 sure enoughs? And if it's a really good year, is there 15 sure enoughs? Yeah. You know, and some on a bad year, there's sure there's four sure enoughs. They're sure enough gonna be good enough for us to, you know, to help our roster. And that's the thing that I don't really know how many of them are, you know, when you start putting together it everybody's in agreement that these are the top 10 guys that are going to go or here's the first four that are going to go and then it gets a little muddy uh, after that and we'll know more on that after we start covering the combine and getting medical information about these players well i think the other part that the, the one part that we, we may have left out is you know there's those are the top five teams but there's 32 teams there's somebody that's going to be a little bit further down in the pecking order that might fall in love with one of those quarterbacks and might be willing to go in and, you know, you know, go in and swoop it and, you know, pay a big high price to get Bryce Young. Or, hey, or wheeling, and wheeling and dealing draft picks. It's like playing poker now for those GMs. Yeah, it they, is. They would rather, they'd rather sometimes trade than pick. <laughs> yeah, they would. They would. No, I mean, there's no, there's some teams that have done that. That you know, let's trade back and let's just get get picks, get picks, get picks. Right. Because it's not a perfect science. No, no, it's we not know, a perfect. We know that, and we need to we need to try to get more picks so we have a better chance of finding players. Yeah. Well, you know what? We're, we're going to be right here to bring all that information. I think that's a you know, it sort of segues nicely into what our plan is to sort of you know cover the off season like no, like we've never done before. Cover the drafts, cover the combine, cover the evaluation process. Talk about who the top players are in each position. Sort of break that down to give our our, our readers and our and our and our viewers a little bit of an insight of what's going on throughout the league during the whole uh, during the, what's called the NFL off season. Sort of give our fans an up close and personal look at what really takes place. But until we get there, we're going we're going to you know, check out this week and see what happens during the during the uh, the divisional playoff games. I think there's going to be a move made on somebody's coach within the next 72 hours. I think by the next time we talk, I do. I'm, just hearing, I'm hearing some. I'm hearing some stuff out of. I'm getting. I got a text from somebody from Tampa who wants me to call him. Um, I'm thinking something. Somebody's something's going to happen with somebody in this league within the next 72 hours, and I do think that you know when we when we reconvene next Tuesday, we'll have something to talk about. I really do because. This this whole hiring cycle, you know, you have three guys, you know, get you know, three teams change coach in the middle of the season. You have two right at right at the season ends. It's sort of unorthodox. Normally, there's six or seven or eight, and they happen usually right after the season. This it, it, this just feels like an outlier, and it just feels differently. And and there's been there's been a whole lot of there's been a whole lot of discussion and smoke, but nothing's really happened. But I think something's gonna happen. Just, just, just based on the conversation I'm ha I'm hearing stuff that I'm reading, I'm thinking something's going to happen. So we'll see. Yeah, Reg, I wouldn't be surprised if there's uh, a couple surprises, baby. Yeah, at two different two, two different teams. Yeah, uh, five two, two two not enough. There's, not there's enough. usually seven. You know, six seven is low. Eight nine ten is average. And then when there's real turnover, you're talking about. 12, 13, 13, you know, that's when it gets really, really crazy. But, Reg, I'm looking forward to the playoffs this weekend. It's going to be a fun week. I'm also looking forward to the non-game -play playing season, which is yeah. what most people call the off season, because that's where teams are built. That's where rosters are put together. That's how coaching staffs work. And that's the work that they're going to do that sets the foundation for next year. And there's only a few teams that are thinking about this year. Most teams in the NFL right now are thinking about next year. Yeah. We're, we're at eight, right? And then it's going to yeah. be full. 
Yeah. Yeah. And then it's going to be all up. 24 teams are thinking about next year. They're already working. They're already working on boards and scouting and all that stuff. They're, do, they're doing all that preparation for the draft. They're doing it right now. But there's eight teams that are still working. They're still trying to, you know, get the get that silver get that silver football to bring back in their in, the, in their bring back their offices. So we'll uh, we'll, we'll reconvene next Tuesday, man, and we'll you know we'll we'll bring bring our our, our, our viewers to check them out, tell them, let them check out what's going on and talk about it, chop it up what's going on. Should be some great games. I'm thinking. I'm still thinking my, my, my I'm still thinking that uh, that uh, it ends for Dallas this weekend. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with it. You you're saying you're saying your San Francisco Boy Nine's gonna win. Okay, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll see. see. We'll, we'll see. see. Who, we'll see who we'll see who gets the gets the gets it right. All right, coach. All right, have man. a great. Be in touch. Have a great week. See you, man. Yeah. Take care. You too.